Lecture by CYC Chen Cynthia. You can pause anytime you need. 你可以随时按下暂停键。Make sure have your tools ready. Okay, so in this section, we are going to discuss about perspective. So what do I mean perspective? So let me write it down first. Okay, so what is perspective? Okay, it helping us to find the space. So what do I mean by that? Okay, so I will show you a simple example. So I have a tree. Okay, I have the tree with the trunk and branch and stick and the leaf. Okay, so how can I present? There's a tree on the street, and I want to describe which one is more close to us, which one is more far away from us. So we have to use the perspective drawing to show people where is the closer one and where is the farthest one. Okay, so I need to have a perspective view. So I'm going to do something looks like this. Then I'm going to start to add in the trees in between the two lines that I made. Even smaller and smaller. You can see it there. So for the perspective, I can tell. The biggest one is more close to us, so we are standing right here. That is me. So this tree will looks bigger because I'm standing more close to this tree, and this tree is a little bit far away, so it looks a little bit smaller. And this one is more far, so it even smaller and smaller, and maybe something here. Right, so that is perspective. That shows the space. All right. So more example that we have a snowman, and I'm making it. All right, that's my snowman. Very simple and easy. And what I wanna show this one is more close to me. I'm right here. So this snowman is giant, right? But The other kids are building their snowmen on somewhere else, and they are not that close to me anymore. So you will see the snowmen should look smaller since they are not that close to me, right? So it will look even smaller, smaller until we can see the detail. So that we call is perspective. So you might see. Some drawing looks like this, a 3D cube. It also is from the perspective view, right? So perspective is not only showing the space. It also change 2D into 3D. So that is the perspective. So today we are going to discuss about the perspective. So basically, we will have three point perspective. So there are three way to do the perspective: one point perspective, two point perspective, and three point perspective. They present different angle, different position with the object and the view. Okay. Okay. So today we are going to learn one point perspective first. So. The one point perspective, which means we need to have one point, but what that point call is called vanish point. So most of the time we just call him VP. So vanish V point is the P. So we will say that's the VP. Okay. So you will need a ruler. A color pen, so it's helping you. If you want to, you can have、uh, the sharpie to to do the final work. Okay, so ruler, color pen. If you don't have the color pen, you can use the pencil crayons. All right. So we know about the the vanish point. 
right? So what is the vantage point? We will do that and you will see it. Okay, so first we have to create the line, the eye level. So I use the purple, the eye level. So let me write it down. So why is the eye level? The eye level is how high you are looking at it. So where is your eye? So pretend that's my face and I got my eye right here. See my tricky eyes and I'm smiling. I'm standing right here. Okay, I'm standing right here and looking at here. That's my VP point. So the VP point, the vanish point has to be on the eye level. So if I standing on a chair or I standing on somewhere high, so that will change my eye level, right? Because I'm standing somewhere higher, so my eye level will be higher. If I lighting down or knee down, my eye level will be lower. So which means the eye level is based on where you are looking at, right? So if you are somewhere high, the eye level will be higher. If you are standing on somewhere low, the eye level will be lower. And the vanish point is somewhere on the eye level. The, eye, uh, the vanish point is not going to be here or there or there. It has to be on the eye level. But the vanish point can be any place. It could be any place on the eye level. You can have on the center right or left okay so let's do a small practice so you are going to do a bunch of the box okay so i will going to use the color red a bunch of the box the box has to be vertical line and horizontal line it has to be straight up okay and the horizontal it, uh, it can be the diagonal, okay? So have to be 90 degree. I want you to practice three, okay? So one is above the eye level, one is below the eye level, and one has to be on the eye level. So we have one, two, and three. Okay, so we are going to practice step by step all together. I know it's a little bit tricky and a little bit hard for some of you. Uh, it is a brand new thing, but we are going to learn that and you will practice this in your math class in school as well. All right, so let's start with the number one. So we are going to connect all the corner or the corner. So how many corner I have for the square? Four, right? So you are going to connect this four corner to the vanish point. Okay, so now is the time to get your ruler. Connect it. I use the block to connect it. Okay, even the bottom. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so you will see I have four corner and all of them are connect to the vanish point. Okay, so I'm going to use another color to help you to see it's more clear. I use the turquoise. So I'm going to find the depth on this one. Okay, so I have to make it straight. Now I find the side. That's where the side is. Okay, then where's the bottom? You have to make sure the bottom, okay, the bottom here is the horizontal on the bottom right here. So I use the orange so you can see it's on the bottom. 
okay then the top because the top size of the cube we are not able to see it because it's over our eye level we are not able to see it just imagine when you standing in front of the bookshelf so you will see the top of the bookshelf or not are you able to see the top of the bookshelf if the bookshelf is higher than you no we only see the bottom parts right the highest part of the bookshelf we are not able to see it because it's higher than our eye level so the same the cube is higher than our eye level so now i'm not going to see the top of the cube but i only can see the bottom side and the front okay let me use okay so let's do the second one again now remember we have four corner and you are going to connect the four corner to the vanish point you can free hand it if you don't have the ruler but if you have you can use the ruler it's easier for you to practice So the same thing, we have to find the light here, right, on the right. Then I'm going to having my side straight up and stop. So I'm find the depth of the cube. And the top, we have to do it like the horizontal. So you will see the top. Let me find the other color so you won't confuse. Peach. Okay, so now I can see the top of the cube, but I can't see the bottom of the cube, right? because my number two is below my eye level so now i want to think another example when you standing in front of the desk or the table were you able to see the bottom part of the table no because the table is lower than your eye level. So you are not able to see the bottom part of the table. You only see the sun face, the top of the table, right? So the same here. The cube is lower than my eye level. So I only can see the top, the side, and the front, right? I'm not able to see the bottom. All right? So number three, again, you are going to connect it. Then we are finding a side, so straight, vertical. So we will see this, the side, the depth, right here. But it's weird, I can't see the top of the cube and the bottom of the cube, right? I only can see the front and the side. I only see two sides. Why? Because the object just in front of your eye, right? It's just in front and it's too big. I can see the top and the bottom because it blocked my eye. It's just right on the eye level. So you see the place different, the angle will be different. The thing that you can see are different. Okay, so I want you to practice five cube for your vanish one, uh, one point perspective. 
Okay, so that's C. So while you are gonna to practice, so practice with one point perspective. So first, I want you to sign up the eye level. So where is the eye level? That's the first one. First, you have to do where's the eye level. Okay. Then you have to find the vanish point. So you can have your, remember I told you, you can have your VP point, vanish point, on the center of the eye level, right or left. But it must on the eye level. You can place your vanish point in anywhere. Okay. So first, set up the eye level. Second, find the vanish point on the eye level. Okay. Then you are going to find a five boxes everywhere around. Okay, sometimes it's below. Okay, sometimes very close to the vanish points. The size could be different. And I want one is on the eye level. Okay. So I want you to practice one, two, three, four, five box. Okay. Now you can start to go ahead to do your small practice with one point perspective. Just a quick remind, all the corner has to connect to the vanish point. So don't mess them up. So you can use the color pencil to trace the line so you don't mess up, okay? Okay, so when you finish the practice, you should see your cube looks like mine. So, the cube, the box is on top of the eye level you are able to see the bottom part of the cube and the side and the front for short if your cube is below than the eye level you are not able to see the bottom part of the cube but you will see the top okay if your cube is on the top of the eye level you are not able to see the top of the cube and the bottom so that's it do you have the same thing okay so the thing below you will see the top the object on top you will see the bottom the object is on the eye level you only see two sides of the cube from and the side not the top not the bottom okay Okay, so after we learn about the basic of the one point perspective, now I want you to use the technique into the, our drawing. Okay, so you can use the sketch paper, so you can do it with the sketch, pencil, crayon, or the watercolor. Okay, because the paper all will be different. If you want to color it with the watercolor, you should got your watercolor paper. Okay, so I give you about 30 seconds to get the paper here. All right, so before you start, you need to have the ruler. If you don't have one, free hand is fine. Okay, so get your paper, ruler if you have one, and the pencils. Okay, so remember the beginning while we are adding the eye level so I want to find a place this time I want to do my eye level a little bit higher 
So I'm going to have my eye level right here. Remember, you have to be the horizontal. So there's my eye level. Then choose one point as the vanish point. Eye level, vanish point. Okay? Then I want you to divide the paper into six pieces. So I'm going to do it at the bottom of the paper. Okay, so that's half half divided. So I have one, two, three. They don't have to be equal. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six colon. Now I have five points, right? So you are going to connect all the points to the vanish point. Okay, then I want you to divide the side, the side into, uh, into four of them. So we have one, two, three, four, five lines. Now we have four. So I have one, two, three, four colon, three points. Again, on the other side will be the same. Three points, four colon. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three points. Okay, so same thing. We are going to connect them to the vanish point. on the other side okay then there are two things one I want to have a barn right here about this big just on top of the eye level and right on top of the vantage point but one thing I want to make is a bird house or the mailbox, your choice. So I'm going to have my box right here. Okay, and remember the cube we learned, we practiced. So we have to connect the line to the vanish points with the corner. So I can find the cube, right? Okay, so I'm going to erase. Let me find my erasers. To erase the line that we donated inside the box. Okay, so what are we gonna do for now? First, you have to design your bird house inside the cube. Then, the barn and the field background. All right, so we are going to do the bird house all together. Okay, then you are going to design your barns by yourself. All right, so let me zoom in to see my bird house. So first of all, you have the cube, right? So I want you to trace the side, the depth, a little bit longer, double line, straight down to close, close. Okay, and horizontal over the cube, that is the roof, and straight down and close. Horizontal, follow the direction. This line is actually going through the vanish point. Okay, then straight down. I just traced the cube that I made. Okay, I just trace it. And it is the bird house, which means I need to have a hole so the bird can fly in, right? And I'm 
are going to add in a pole so the bird can stand in on top of it. Close the bottom and I add in a pole. Okay, and we can add more detail. The detail of what? The texture is made by the wood, right? So I add in the wood piece. The texture of the wood. The texture of the wood. Same thing on the front. Don't cup the door. Leave it open. So same thing, I'm going to trace the textures for the wood pattern. All right. Okay. So we finished the bird house all together. You can work in on the, the barn. So what kind of barn you want to have? Okay, I am going to start to do mine and you can see it. And maybe that is helping you to do something with your own barns. Okay, so see, I finished my birdhouse and we should finish the birdhouse together, right? Because we do it step by step. Then you have to finish your barns. Then if you want to, you can add the birds. So whatever, if you haven't done the bird yet, it's okay. Now I want to trace the eye level because it also is our ground level. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Then trace the line that we have. Then I will tell you what we are gonna do for each column. Okay, so when you clarify the line, don't use the ruler because we are doing the art. And remember we have a birdhouse right here, so don't cross over because it is behind, right? The bird house is in front, so nothing block it, okay? So we have the bird house, we have the farms, and we have the barn, all right? Then, what are you gonna do for each colon? So that's your choice. You want to have them to plant the food, like corn, like uh, flowers like um, grapes, okay? Or you want to have them planting something under the ground like carrots or sweet potato so the leaf will look different. So each colon you can plant in different plants or the same thing, your choice, all right? So I want you to take your time to adding the background and the plants in the farm. Okay, then we're done with the class after we finish all of the outline. So feel free, if you want to color, you can do it after the class. Okay?
Okay, so remember the background on top of the eye level because they are far, far away. So you have to make sure they are small. Okay, the bomb usually are big. So maybe some of the tree is very high and very tall, but they are not over the bomb too much, right? They are about the same. Okay, and you have the small bush and they are lower. So remember the size. Because we are doing the perspective, and it has to show the space. The birdhouse is the one more close to us. So even the birdhouse is smaller than the tree, but the birdhouse is close to us, so the birdhouse will look bigger. The tree is big, and the barn is big, but they are far, far away. So they will look smaller. So that is the perspective. So you have to keep that in your mind. Something far, something small. Something close, and they are big. Clear? Now, let's double check. Do you have the thing looks a little bit weird? And you have to fix it. And don't forget, if you want to trace, don't forget to trace with the line weight. So the main object, the, my bomb is the main object. My birdhouse is the main object, so I use the thicker marker to trace. But my tree, something behind, the pattern of the wood, they are just like the decorations, right? So I use the thin marker to trace. So you won't feel the joint too heavy. So we will have the focal point and we also have the detail. So the lightweight is helping us a lot to make our joint looks more professional and it will be more clear to people who watch the joint, right? All right, so that is, that's the joint shoe looks like at the end. So you have to do the coloring as the homework. You can choose to use the pencil crayon, watercolor or the sketch. But I want to see dark, medium, light, the color volume. Even I use the markers. So I still have the dark color, middle blending color, and the light color. All right, so that's what you should do. And don't forget to sign the name and write down the date and take a photo and send it to me. So I can check your work and return the feedback. When you complete your join, sign the name and write down the date. 完成画作之后, 签下你的名字, Don't forget to take a photo of your join and send it to us. 不要忘记帮你的作品拍上照片寄给我们哦! And don't forget to clean out the table before you go. 不要忘记清洁你的桌子哦! Bye bye! See you next time!